Welcome back to PlayStation Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at I Am Dead on the PlayStation 5, but is this puzzle adventure worth your time and how does this PlayStation 5 version compare to other builds? Well a shout out first of all to Anapiona Interactive today for providing the review copy and with that hit subscribe, join our growing PlayStation family and let's get started. So here you'll be taking on the role of Morris Lupton, he is the curator for the island of Shalmaston's museum. Now Shalmaston it's basically a small seaside like town. The title though I am dead that is because you also happen to be recently deceased and your actions and the control you are given that is in a spirit form. Now shortly after the opening though you are reunited with your dog Sparky who's also dead too but in this existence she can also talk. She now warns you though of doom coming to the island you see at the centre of this location there's a dormant volcano or at least the locals think it's dormant basically though it's going to erupt and cause disaster unless you can find a new guardian a new spirit to watch over it so this is now my second time with I Am Dead. I actually reviewed the Switch build back at release as well where it was exclusive at the time and it's lost seriously none of its charm. The comparison I made back then and I absolutely stand by it is Wes Anderson the video game because yes this is absolutely like high stakes in its idea but instead the game focuses on Morris's connection with the locals, love, loss. You know basically it's a character study first and foremost and a great one at that all wrapped up then with some quirky humour and great writing. So gameplay and it's relatively simplistic in its design now the idea you need to move from location to location around this island and just find the local spirits and try to talk them into becoming the volcano spirit guardian to do this though not as simple as kind of rocking up at the front door having a quick dialogue exchange and offering them the job first you need to awaken them to do this you must find items at each location that are attached to the owner in some sort of way five at each in total finding these though will allow sparky your trusty a to sniff them out and away we go. These items then though each lead to just a little bit more story on each of these spirits and why these particular trinkets hold value. The core gameplay though to do this it comes down to two elements first it's kind of a hidden object game essentially with a deeper than usual you know story and tons of just character you'll be able to like rotate the camera locations they change floors and while you have limited movement you do have a cursor on screen to highlight specific items for a description the locations are essentially dioramas as well but they add in just enough variety that it never feels repetitive and these locations gradually expand and they do become more complex you can also then zoom in and out from these locations gaining a wider like perspective of everything or you can specifically focus on a single item and actually cut straight into it zooming into the inside like let's say the the desk at the museum as you're trying to identify where these items are though you do get what is a smaller visual puzzle there's characters in this world with bubbles above their head you click them and they will start to tell you a tale of what that item will be it's simple enough though you rotate the like screen until an image appears and this gives you the characters backstory who they were what happened why they have potential as you know a guardian this was the highlight for me something seriously chill about the gameplay but this is when the storytelling is at its finest this story then reveals the final items that you may need to find and then we'll jump into dialogue with that spirit before moving on with the adventure. There's also then a minimal collector fun backing this up in the form of like finding shapes and Sparky gets a few moments in game that do give you control but to avoid spoilers we won't be showing any of that today. What I really like about the PlayStation version though first off is the trophies it leads to replayability. I had a sense I wanted to explore absolutely everything rather than just hit the game's you know main check marks. It pushed me to kind of play out the optional elements of the game as well something my time with the Switch build lacked. Outside of that though, honestly, there's not a whole lot more to it. You really need to come to this one for story. You, you want to understand, you know, these characters and there's going to be some puzzles and along the way. The puzzles, they are not difficult at all. The game is designed to be relatively simplistic by design. It never wants to stop the pacing of this tale, but it is absolutely worthy of your time. If anything, my only issue, because I have very little complaints with this one, honestly, I would have loved to have seen them use maybe a little more of the dual sense for the PS5 build. I think there's some creative things they could have done here. Visually then I Am Dead is absolutely not a demo disc for the power of the PlayStation 5 down to you know naturally the artistic vision involved. That's not to say though it's you know not impressive it was always a good looking game and here we get the addition of 4k 
to really give a stunning image quality. And then the color reproduction is just awesome. Every location just pops with character from the hand painted style to the small amounts of movement that really bring this world to life. Like for example, the lighthouse with the waves just moving around it. The game scale as well then was something I always enjoyed from larger locations, giving you more ground to cover to smaller, more cramped locations, but they just kind of fill them completely with like trinkets. Character design then, they are unique and the only visual issue I really had during dialogue moments and on identifying a new potential spirit, we get these kind of like hand drawn designs next to those dialogue boxes. They feel a little lower in quality, a little pixelated and almost slightly blurred, but that is, I've got to say still me being super picky. Finally, the audio, and I love the sound design. We not only get a beautiful score to reinforce this world that captures the locations and almost the whimsical nature of the game, but it's just reinforced then with some surprisingly impressive audio design. In this game, it would have been easy to just kind of like ignore sound effects, honestly, and they went above and beyond. What we get though is things like environmental sounds from the world around you, full face acting from a top quality cast. We get sound effects attached to the trinkets, like the first one that is Sparky's dog tag. We get like a bark sound. It's this small attention to detail that elevates how immersive it all is. So the final verdict, and a year after the original release, it's lost none of its charm revisiting it on the PlayStation 5. While it's not the longest of adventures, I took around 5 hours and I definitely took my time, it's more a game to play in maybe one or two sittings, but once you do pick it up I think it's hard to put down just because you absolutely get wrapped up in its world. It's just the story, the characters, the, the world itself, it's just such a pleasure to explore and while it is a high stakes situation, it's the small story is within that will make it so memorable. Anna Piona Interactive, then they always deliver us the weird and wonderful and their catalogue of games is just incredible. This is another one for them to add to their list. It's also from the team behind a Hokum and Walmart's Warehouse and this is just another equally impressive piece of work. The addition of trophies then really adds to that replayability value and my only real complaint, I would have loved to have seen them experiment with how they could implement the dual sense around the design just a little bit more outside of those visual puzzles. Otherwise though, this is just a a win for everyone involved and it comes highly recommended from me. An amazing 9 out of 10 and this being my second time around as I said it's lost none of its charm and I'm sticking with my previous description of this one which was Wes Anderson the video game. If that sounds appealing to you you should absolutely check it out. Will you be adding this one to the library though or are you holding onto that cash? Another shout out and a thank you to Anna Piana Interactive then for the review code for this video today and with that hit subscribe join our growing playstation family and i'll see you all on the next video thanks everyone